Well, hello, and welcome to my quilt circle. So today I'm actually going to be hand working on hand quilting this quilt. It's an original design, and um, I'm calling it the gin and tonic quilt. And it, I'm going to quilt all of it like this. So I'm about mm, a quarter of the way through quilting it. And I'll probably only get another three lines long hair quilted today in this hour. It's a very, very slow process. But that's why I'm here, so you guys can uh, chat with me and tell me all about what you're working on, if you're working on a project, or ask me questions. Um, I'd like to do this with you and not alone. So this is a very slow process. Beep. If you have a topic you want to talk about just put it in the chat we've got the chat open here I can read whatever you post So I don't normally hand quilt at a table like this. I normally do it all curled up on the couch, but that seemed kind of awkward to film. Uh, so I'm trying something new. This hasn't been too bad so far. I'm a little further away from the, the quilt than I'd like to be, but that was going to be a problem anyway, because if I stick my face where I want it, I would block the camera. So this quilt is going to have about 300 feet of hand quilting to it and that's kind of a silly design because it's very long to hand quilt. I think it looks really pretty. It's just very dense for hand quilting. I normally, this is a one inch spacing between the lines. That's the spacing I normally use when I'm machine quilting. So I just decided to use it for hand quilting. but. It is going to take a very long time. Um, normally for hand quilting, unless you are making a really nice showpiece, you could get away with you know, four inch spacing between lines, uh, which would have gone a lot quicker. So when I hand quilt, I normally load two or three stitches on the needle at a time. I'm running out of thread on this needle. So I'll have to tie it off soon. And this is called big stitch quilting because the stitches are meant to be big and visible. It's not really a traditional form of hand quilting. Um, you For that you use really small needles and thin thread and um, the stitches should be much smaller if you're doing it properly. Uh, 
And right now I'm just tying off this end because I'll need to get more thread. So I'm going to re-thread my needle. I've been working on this one since I think October on and off. I took a very large break around the holiday season because I had, I guess, more seasonal projects to work on. If you have any questions or want to comment, just throw it in the chat. I can talk to myself for a very long time, but it's not as fun as talking to other people. So I'm using this thimble on my middle finger to kind of rock the needle back and forth. And that's how I'm loading the stitches. I have my other hand on the back side of the quilt so I can feel when the needle comes through, which yes, means every stitch I make, I am poking myself with a needle. You get used to it. But that ensures that the, uh, the needle's gone all the way through the quilt. So your quilting actually works. And so it looks pretty from the back, even though it doesn't look as pretty from the back. So when I came up with doing this design, I actually was planning on using my walking foot, but I have these curves and they, I tried them several times with my walking foot on my sewing machine and I just couldn't get them to look nice. So I said, well, I can do it with hand quilting. And then the whole thing ended up being hand quilting. And I probably should have thought that one through a little bit more. It's okay. This one will be done in time. I think I want it done by March. Which if I chip at it a little bit every day, it'll get there. I'm working on another quilt. It's also in the quilting phase. That one needs to be done in oh, about two weeks. Um because that, that one's going to hang in a show. And I am mm, maybe a little more nervous about that deadline. I picked a, a silly quilting design for that one too. It's machine quilted, but there are a lot of starts and stops, which means I have to bury all the 
thread ends, which is laborious. One of them's not so bad. Burying a thread end is takes 20, 30 seconds. But when you have hundreds of them, it really adds up and it's not a very fun task. I find hand quilting is more fun. It's relaxing. I, I do it on the couch. It's kind of what I pick up when I'm watching TV or waiting or, you know, taking a break. It's also true of um, quilt binding. I hand bind all my quilts. Each one takes, mm, depends on the size of the quilt, of course, but maybe four more hours to hand bind a quilt. That part I find really exciting now because once you finish binding it, the quilt is done and you can share it. It's just nice, you get a sense of completion. This light here is on its lowest setting and it's still, it's an LED light, but it still gets pr pretty hot, especially after it's been on for a while. And the door to the room is closed and all the fans are off. I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, but I did mark the lines that I'm quilting on. I just ran a butter knife with a ruler to keep it straight. And it makes a subtle crease in the fabric and that's what I'm following. I prefer doing that to using marking tools like fabric pens and tailor's chalk because sometimes those have a hard time coming out. And that's a big disappointment. If anyone's put anything in the chat, I can't see it. Let's see. I'm just making sure.
All righty. Back to quilting. No two stitches are ever the same. Honestly, these lines are pretty wonky too, but when you when you look at it close up, you can definitely tell. When you look at it from far away, it looks nice. It's probably true for most things. So I'm just sitting here doing nothing. If you'd like to talk about something, you can throw it in the chat or ask a question. I can only talk to myself for so long and I think I've exhausted most of it. So there's a lot of um, parts of the quilting process from making quilts the whole way. 
where you end up doing something really repetitive. Either cutting out fabric, sometimes you need hundreds of the same size squares of fabric. Uh, quilting, piecing. Of course, there's designs that don't require the same repeti repetitiveness as others, but I find it quite soothing and meditative. So I could sit here and silently do this. But it's supposed to be quilt circle. So I'm going to keep talking. I am enjoying this though. Ah, uh, I have a message from Choo Choo Dreamer. They ask, how do you decide which quilting pattern to use? Um, well, that's a, I'm not sure what they mean by quilting pattern. So if they're talking about the patchwork pattern, the instructions to make the top, like how I piece together these um, circles and rectangles from fabric. Um, I usually make uh, whatever suits me. Lately, I've been making mostly my own designs. Um, I, I started by making other people's designs. You can buy them online. You can buy patterns. I have a few patterns available in my shop on my website. Um, and that's a good way to learn or if you don't want to do math or if you're not good at design and you just want to jump right into the making, that's a, a great way to do it. It's buy someone else's pattern. You can find a lot of free ones as well. Um, but I like making my own designs. It's just the expression, the uniqueness. I find it fun. If you are, if Choo Choo Dreamer was asking about how do I choose my um, quilt, quilting design, so, you know, the quilting I'm actually doing right now, that also depends on the quilt. If I want to highlight the piecing, which I do on, on this one, oops, I pick something that's going to kind of bring that out, like the, the design I have here, which emphasizes that circular pattern. Excuse me, I gotta re-thread my needle. Um, sometimes I want the piecework to stand all on its own and then I'll do something simple. Um, either stitch the ditch with uh, thin and matching thread or just do vertical or horizontal lines. This one, I wanted the quilting to stand out a bit. I'm using solid fabrics and it just seemed like it needed something a little more interesting. Oh, Disarray10 says, hey, hi, Disarray10. If you missed it, I'm just gonna hand quilt this entire time and I'm talking about the process. So this takes forever. Um, let me finish this line and I'll show you what I've got done so far. So in this session, what, it's now been 24 minutes. All I've gotten done was this one row. I have two more to get done in this section. And then I'll get to move on to a different section. Uh, this is, I'm on my third section of seven. So um, it's going to be a while. And to, to get the thread over to this next line, I'm just going to hide it in the quilt here. So I run it through. I don't go all the way through, just through the layers. and Pop it out where I want it. Ta-da. Now since I'm going the other way, I've got to turn the quilt.
So Disarray 10, if you missed it, every time I do a stitch, I'm actually stabbing myself. Because I have my hand on the back side of this quilt, so I can feel when the needle goes through. You want to make sure your quilt stitches go all the way through, because that's kind of the point of quilting. So quilting started out as a way to use up scraps of fabric, um, you know, worn out pants and blankets and whatnot. And so you would make a, a blanket sized quilt top out of it and you'd stuff it with whatever you had around, wool, cotton, and you put another piece of fabric on the back. This is how, what I've got here. I've got my top, which is the, the green and um, teal thing you've been looking at. My stuffing. So modern day we have just batting, which comes in a package. So you just open it, unroll it. And then my backing, which is another piece of fabric. And then the quilting keeps all the layers from shifting with one another. So it was um, a, originally a, a practical skill. But like any practical skill, people have made an art of it. And now <laughs> I always feel funny when I think about it. I buy fabric to make quilts, which like brand new fabric to make quilts, which is not the way it started. There are some cool, um, some people doing really cool things like thrifting bed sheets and shirts and all sorts of textiles and making quilts from them, which is more sustainable and, and brings quilting back to its roots. I'm actually using a bed sheet for the back of this. Um, this is a bed sheet because it's cheaper than buying quilting fabric and quilting fabric tends not to be wide enough to get to fit the whole blanket. So you have to piece two pieces together and it's just easier to use a sheet, a sheet. However, you don't have nearly the selection with bed sheets as you do with fabric. Well, at least not easily. You know, there's several fabric stores within driving distance of me. There's not a whole lot of bed sheet stores. And most home, home goods suppliers will have, you know, a selection, but not nearly the selection that you get from a quilting store, of quilting fabric. There's some really neat fabric out there, and yet I stick with solids a lot of the time. The solids work for this um, quilting design because I'm putting the pink quilting on top of it to, to make it pop. So it's like I'm adding my own print to it. Disarray 10 asks, how thick is that material? And sorry, how many layers? Okay, that's a good question. So um, it's three layers. You have your quilt top. That's usually what you think of. That's the main, the main affair. That's what I made here. So that's um, you know, what gets judged, what gets shown. That's the, the quilt top. Then you have a back, which again, I'm just using a bed sheet. Most people just use a single cut of fabric, but you do see some quilts that are pieced front and back, which is nice. Or they use scraps from the front and just kind of improvise a back. And then in the middle is this batting, which you can get it in different thicknesses. It's not really that thick, um, but it makes it, you know, blanket weight. You can get it in different 
Wait, this is, I can't remember which one I used on this one. Yeah, this is a medium weight batting, but I tend to use lighter weight. Um, I like the way it drapes better and it's cheaper. And it, um, I usually use a cotton poly blend, which is really easy to care for, especially because most of the quilts end up as gifts or they go to other people. And I want to make sure it's not super difficult for them to care for their quilt. Quilting off the camera, aren't I? The batting I'm using for this isn't my favorite batting, but it, I had it, so I might as well use it. So when I do eventually release the pattern for this, quilt I which means when I finally write up and test and sell the PDF instructions on how to make this quilt I want this to be the cover quilt and I'm hoping from <laughs> far it looks pretty good so if you have any more questions about what I'm doing you can throw them in the chat I am checking it while also getting some hand quilting done. I'm going to run out of this thread pretty soon. Uh, Disarray10 asks, what is the metallic thing on my right middle finger? So the metallic thing is a thimble. It's attached to a rubbery thing that keeps it on. That's what I'm using to push the needle through the quilt. And I do so with a rocking motion. And I load up two or three stitches before I pull the needle through. If I was pushing on this with just my bare finger, it would hurt a lot. I know it's technically the dull end of the needle, but it still hurts, especially when you need all the pressure to push it through three layers of material. All right, I'll do two more stitches with this. So I mentioned before, I normally do my hand quilting on the couch in front of the TV. So doing it on, at the table is a little different for me, but I think it's going okay. Now to finish this off, I'm just going to tie a knot in the thread. With this thread, double knotting is Good enough. And then instead of going all the way through, I'm just going to make it look like a stitch, but I'm going to run it between the layers. So it's not going to the other side of the quilt. And I use my hand to make sure of that. There. I run it through about an inch. And then just kind of pop that knot under the layer. So now the knot is hidden. And I'll get more thread. So I'm using what's called Pearl 8 cotton. It's very common for people who like to do big stitch quilting, which is what I'm doing. I figure if you're going to spend all the time doing hand quilting, you may as well make it really visible. 
which is why I'm using a contrasting color as well. So similar to ending it, I'm just going to run it, run the needle through. Oops, I gotta check the back, make sure I'm not going all the way through. So run it through the layers, pop the needle out where I want the stitch to start, close enough. Put another knot on the end and just pop it through again. It's easier to pop it through the quilting fabric instead of the, the bed sheet. The bed sheet is a different weave. It's not, it wouldn't be great to make quilts out of, make quilt tops, but it's pretty good for backing. So just popped the knot in there and now it's secure. And back to hand quilting. And sometimes when I have thread this long, I end up with knots, which isn't great. So I just have to be careful when I thread it through and I pull it through. That's when the knots happen. So as I said before, I need, I want to get this one done by spring. So I'm going to have to chip away at it a little bit every day. I forget what date I have. I have a whole calendar schedule and to-do list. Like I said, I was working on, I'm working on two quilts pretty actively right now. I have more going because I'm insane like that. Um, but two that are in the quilting process and have really intense designs. So there's this one, which is intense because hand quilting is slow. <laughs> and then I have another one, a version of my Ascend quilt. And that needs to be finished in two weeks so I can submit it for a show. Quilt Fiesta in Tucson. And I have some ambitious design plans for that one too. I'm maybe about a third of the way with that one. It's just the tying in the ends. Oh my gosh, it's driving me crazy. I usually do it on the floor too. In weird yoga poses. Just to keep it interesting. For whatever reason, the repetitiveness of hand quilting is much nicer than tying in ends from machine quilting.
So I can just cut this tail off here. They kind of bother me after a while. I don't cut them off, off right away, just I want to get some stitches in there for extra security, but. I keep finding them. I have a quilt that I've been using that I hand quilted. I put it away now because it's January. It's a Christmas quilt. And every so often I find a thread that I didn't snip. Drives me crazy. Disarray10 asks if there's tying in machine quilting. Um, it depends what you're doing. So I tend to prefer um, designs that go edge to edge. And when you do it, when you start on the very edge like this, you can backstitch to secure your, your thread because Eventually, the binding, which is what hides, you know, the sandwich layers here, the binding will eventually cover that so it's not visible. But when you start or stop in the middle of the quilt, which the design I picked does so hundreds of times, literally hundreds of times, um, you want to do like you're like I'm doing with the hand quilting here and tie off and bury the ends of the thread. You can, there, there are some quicker methods um, for, for doing it that don't involve tying off and burying ends, but they're not show quality methods. So one method is like the tiny stitch method which means um, once you get to the end, instead of back stitching to secure the stitches, you put the machine, you set your machine to go really small stitches. And it kind of acts as a knot. But I don't particularly like the look of that. I've tried it a few times. And it's a, it's a personal preference, of course. I don't think anyone Especially no one who quilts. I don't think anyone would notice uh, the tiny stitches at the end, but the reason I'm burying all my ends for the quilts I'm making is because I am going to show it and thousands of quilters work, will come through and watch it. Oh, so KV5 for time chat. They say, I love the colors. I can't remember how I picked these colors in, in particular. I remember I bought these fabrics, this line of fabrics, because it was on sale that week. But I don't, but all of the fabrics from this line were on sale. I don't know why I picked these two colors. It was a long time ago when I started this. <laughs> it's been months. because of the hand quilting. KV5 says, she had trouble placing the comment. Well, I'm glad you're here now. It's more fun when people are asking me questions and giving me comments. But I probably could talk to myself for an hour. Is anyone working on something else while you're watching the stream? You know, doing this on a stream is uh, nice. 
<laughs> because I never really time myself when I do this. So I never know how long it actually takes. It makes it hard to estimate. I just kind of lose myself in the process. Desiree 10 says they're half cooking. I don't know what half cooking means. Are you only cooking things halfway? Are you cooking with someone else? I don't, I don't understand what half cooking is. All right, Desiree 10 clarified. Baking a sweet potato because they're great. I have to agree. Potatoes are amazing. Sweet potatoes are sweet and amazing. Carbs on carbs. But you can pretend they're healthy because they're almost like a vegetable. I like the way my mom prepares sweet potatoes at Thanksgiving with the marshmallows on top. You'll always get me with marshmallows. I just love marshmallows. Oh, I missed the comment from KB5. They're half working. Why is everyone half doing things? I guess I'm trying to do two things at once too. Desiree says peanut butter with sweet potatoes. I don't think I've ever tried that. Peanuts aren't really my favorite thing. Unless it's in Reese's, which is a huge exception. I ate like 30 of those today. Just spread out throughout the day. You know, grab one every time I go in the kitchen. I hope now you know that if anyone gives you something hand quilted, you should appreciate it a lot <laughs> because this is a lot of effort, a lot of time. My grandma always hand quilted her quilt. She was very good quilter, very good hand quilter. She's given, it's a little too laborious for her now to do many of the tasks that you have to do for quilting. She still makes small projects, but she would always do make full or queen size quilts and she would hand quilt the whole thing with little stitches and beautiful swirly patterns. And it would take her about a year to do a quilt. So forever, basically I'm, Hoping this doesn't take me a year. I'm also doing bigger stitches <laughs> and doing lines instead of swirlies. So hopefully that cuts down on my time. So I'm getting towards the end of a row again. The end parts are hard to do because I can't maintain good tension on the, on the quilt to do my normal rocking motion.
Desiree 10 is telling us about a pillow his roommate's mom made for him. With the turtle. I love the turtles. Yeah, so quilting is technically when you are stitching through multiple layers of textile to hold it together or for decorative purposes. Quilting is also a form of embroidery. It's just a very specific form. So a lot of the quilt shows, they really have to define quilt because people, well, you know, it's um, people will design some really kind of neat things that really test the boundaries on what a quilt is. I don't, I have some ideas on how to do that myself, but I really don't want to rock the boat yet too much. I did, if you go on my Instagram way, way, way back, I made a quilt, two quilts with EL wire, mini quilts as Christmas gifts. And I really wanna try and use EL wire on a big quilt like this. But I haven't thought of the exact right project for it. And getting the wiring, all the, um, the components you need, they don't really lay nice in a, in a quilt very well. So I need to think about that or shop around some more. This project has actually been going a little bit faster in the past few weeks. Oh, Disarray 10 asked a question. Thanks for saving me. Does Ricky still like boxes? <laughs> yes. Ricky is my almost 10 year old Boston Terrier. and He likes sitting in boxes. And I have dozens, literally dozens of pictures of him just sitting in cardboard boxes. And I think he does it. I don't know if he really likes the boxes that much. I think he does it because it amuses me so much. And he's a good boy. But he will get in a box for me. I have some boxes downstairs. I'm going to let him sit in. We put the boxes down on the floor by the recycling. And then he just climbs in. He falls asleep in them a lot of times. I just find it so delightful. I think, I really think that's why he does it. He's now started howling whenever he's sad instead of just barking because I taught him to howl, you know, on command. So now he just thinks that howling makes me happy and it kind of does because every time he does it, I laugh. Even when he's being annoying because <laughs> it's so pathetic. <laughs> It's so sad and pathetic. I love it. Right. 
So I think I'll stop when I get to the end of this row, which is still a ways off. I'm just warning you guys. So it's been almost an hour and I've did two rows and just a little bit of this third row. It's a lot of quilting. I thought about doing a temperature quilt that was all hand quilted. Um, so it would have 365 lines and I would quilt one row a day, one line a day based on the temperature with a color code. And then I thought that would be insane. Or logistically hard to manage. 365 lines means the quilting lines would have to be really close together to make like a reasonable size quilt. And you don't want to do that one after the other. So if I was going to quilt more densely than this, I would do the one inch spacing and then I'd go through and fill it out. You kind of get a warped effect if you just start quilting out really closely together. Probably should have taken my watch off. You can hear it scrape against the table. All right, Disarray 10 asks a question that for some reason my computer won't show me. All right, new question. <laughs> How are the rows all kept straight? So I actually used a ruler and a butter knife and I just traced along the ruler with to keep it straight, a straight edge with the butter knife and it made this really tiny crease. Um, it's faint. I can see it pretty well. It probably isn't going to show up on the camera very well. Uh, so it's just a faint crease that I'm following. And uh, it's better than marking with um, like pens or, or something, because this one I won't have to wash out. It's always kind of scary when you're making a quilt, a special quilt, which is really every quilt. And your markings, your marking pen or whatever doesn't come out, which has happened enough times that I try to avoid them if at all possible. All right, I'm gonna need to tie this one off. The reason I tie off from the back and start from the front is so there's not a, a skipped stitch. If I did everything from the front, it would look like a stitch was missing on the back, which is a very minor detail, especially because there are some stitches that are just missing because I, I didn't go all the way through with them. But it's what I do. Sometimes it, it it's more important than others. It's just a habit at this point. Oh man, this is pointing stuff out. I need to find a better way to do the chat. All of you are the same color and I keep missing stuff. KV asked the same question. Yep, I can uh, show you if you want. Let me cut this off. It's really that easy. I got a ruler and a butter knife. 
Now, real quilters <laughs> would have a, a tool called a hair marker, which I would get, but every time I go to the store and think about it, they're all out. So I just use a butter knife. And so I would line it up, just mark like that. And now I have a straight line, which I can see, you might be able to see it faintly. I think I can see it from the camera. So I, I don't have too much more to go. You can see that's what I want to get done tonight. That KV can see it. That's good. Yeah, it's very faint. You probably wouldn't notice it unless you were looking for it. Now, funny enough, this is how I tried marking it when I tried machine quilting this one. But under the, just the way my machine light is, that either the temperature or the angle or something, I cannot actually see it on my machine, which is annoying. Then I ended up not using the machine anyway. Just make sure that's not going through. There is something satisfying about, oh no, my knot didn't work. About popping these knots through the, the fabric layer. All right, back to rocking and rolling. Really excited to get this section done. I would have dropped you guys at the hour mark because I really want to get this done. It's always, you know, that nice sense of completion, even though I have a lot more quilt to go. KB says Nilla Kitty is. That's her cat. I've met Nilla. Nilla is asleep in her lap. I wouldn't disturb Nilla either. Honestly, doing this hand quilting at a table is not so bad. I just need to remember that you can't see everything and <laughs> to pull the quilt out from the camera. So I'm actually using a new microphone for this stream. So you guys should let me know how that is. And if it's synced up with the video, I have no idea. I don't know if you can tell when I'm hand quilting and I'm talking off screen. I tried to make sure it was right, but I only put minimal effort into it.
So one of the few quilts I've hand quilted, especially not big stitch hand quilting, was a Hawaiian quilt. It was just a mini quilt. It was 22 inches. That was a, that was a struggle. I used very small stitches. And with a Hawaiian quilt, you kind of echo your design, which means you go around at equivalent spacing. And most, mostly the Hawaiian quilters, they just do it by eye. So I did it by eye. So it looks kind of charmingly wonky. But that quilt took forever because forever, you know, not literally. Um, but I also did the applique by hand. So Hawaiian quilts are also applique. And I'm glad I didn't commit to doing a full size throw quilt or anything. And the 22 inch one was <laughs> plenty for me. If you don't know what a Hawaiian quilt is, you should look it up because they're really cool. Uh, making them is really cool. So it's like making the snowflakes when you were in grade school or whatever, where you fold the paper up and then do some cuts. And then when you open it up, it's a pretty snowflake. That's what you do for a Hawaiian quilt. And there's some really cool designs seen. And traditionally, they're all done by hand. I cheated and did some parts by machine. Not a lot of it. Mostly the binding. I've never tried doing the bind uh, the front side of the binding. I always do the back side by hand. But I never tried doing the front side by hand. Now I'm thinking maybe I should do a bigger Hawaiian quilt, but that's really bad thought. That that would be a bad idea. I have so many other quilts I need to work on. If you saw one of my other quilt circles, I was working on a series of three quilts for my going somewhere pattern, which is also an unreleased pattern. And then I was just commissioned to do a baby quilt. And... Of course, I have the quilt to finish for the show and this one, so. And then I'm making some samples of my quilting for a blog post that I'll, I'll uh, publish next month. So it's really, I probably overcommitted already. That's okay, at least I enjoy, I enjoy the quilting. So if I'm overcommitted making quilts, that's fine. If you want me to make a specific quilt or do a specific part of quilting in one of the upcoming videos, you should let me know because I could plan for that. Usually what I'm working on is just whatever has to get done. I'm doing quiet quilting on Friday and you can bet 100% it's going to be the, the show quilt that I need to get done in two weeks. I wonder how my machine will sound on my new mic. It's supposed to be able to pick up kind of the ASMR sounds a little better. I'm getting all sorts of fun toys for streaming. Oops. Oh no. 
there was a little tiny knock. Stitch, I had to pull it out. Desiree asks, have you done Star Wars designs? Um, I've made Star Wars quilts before. And uh, so, you know, I can't really sell them or anything because licensing. But there's a whole site. It's called Fandom in Stitches, which has quilt patterns. Um, they're unlicensed, but you're not allowed to sell anything you make from them. They're just for fun. But there's quilt patterns block patterns mostly for all different sorts of fandoms. Um, there's like pretty much every fandom that <laughs> quilters might want to make a quilt out of. And so you can find a lot of really cute patterns on there. I've also designed one of my own. It's the fulcrum symbol with Ahsoka colors. I was going to submit it to fandom and stitches but I just, I need to um, clean up the pattern PDF a little because there were some errors and I just never did that because there's not a whole lot of incentive to submit something to the internet for free. But it would be, one day I'll feel motivated enough to do that. If you want to know when I used EL wire in a quilt, it was actually a lightsaber quilt that I made as a Christmas gift for my brother. If you scroll back far enough on Instagram, you'll be able to find it. I don't know where else you'd be able to see it. Most of the patterns on fandom and stitches are foundation paper piecing pattern, which is like coloring in the lines, except it's sewing on the lines. It's a way for you to make some patterns that require some awkward shapes without having to measure and cut them precisely. I do a lot of a lot of foundation paper piecing. In fact, that was the topic of my last blog post and my last pattern, actually my last two patterns. I'm trying to challenge myself by doing some <laughs> quilts that don't require foundation paper piecing, but I always go back to it because I'm lazy and you don't need to be very precise when you're cutting fabric and whatnot for, for foundation paper piecing. I'm getting pretty close to the end here. Well, It's so nice to see it done. Just, I mean, these three rows. I did three, three rows in over an hour. It's been so fun. So do the nighttime, the evening streams work better than the morning streams? I'm kind of a morning person, so I just thought, hey, I should do it in the morning. I'm not too much of a morning person. I'll wake up really early, but I don't really want to talk to you until 9 or 10. Maybe later, depending on how cranky I am. Oops. 
My needle came unthreaded. Uh, KB says, either way. Um, I agree. I've kind of been putting them all over the place just to see, see what works and give people options. If you want to join the Twitch affiliate program, you have to be streaming like <laughs> every day. Not sure that's where I'm headed. It just, apparently it's not abnormal for streamers to stream every day. I might work up to that at some point, but I'm still kind of testing the waters. Guys, you just watched me stab myself like 3,000 times. When I'm going through periods of heavy hand quilting, I will develop a callus. <laughs> All right. All right, Desiree put there and put in for times. Just keep an eye on the schedule. I'll try different things at different times. But I'll give you enough warning. So this one I'm just gonna tie off on the front because it's the end. It's not in the middle of a line. All right, that's nice to have that done. Well, as I said, I'm gonna sign off. My next stream is on Friday at 10 a.m. Mountain, and that's gonna be quiet quilting. If you can't make it, it'll be available for on demand on YouTube later that day. And uh, it's been really nice hanging out with you guys, and I hope you enjoyed watching me quilt. Ooh. This is bothering me. Have a happy night.